Hey, and welcome to the first ever episode of the podcast that doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> we should really have come up with that before we started. We should have. <laughs> For now, let's just go with Granin, the Granin podcast. The Granin podcast. The Granin podcast. For most of you watching, you probably already know us, which is probably the reason you're watching this. I wouldn't expect us to get a lot of strangers watching our podcast for a while. But uh, this first episode is going to be a little background. Even for those of you who do know us and who do know a little bit about us, maybe you don't know some of the details of how we got into filmmaking or some more stuff about that. It's so weird being like eye level with you. Yeah, she's sitting on a chair that's like two inches taller. At least. Yeah. In real life, I'm 5'7". I'm five four. Yeah. Anyways. We still work, can wear each other's clothes, though, so that's cool. That is cool. <laughs> I really do like that. I need to stop laughing in the microphone. It's going to be a nightmare to edit. <laughs> How far back in time do we want to go? Let's start it at the birth of the company for now. Okay. And then go into, like, a history. Okay. The birth of the company was actually Mario's idea. Yeah. Mario's my husband of three and a half years almost, and he and Brooke are cousins, and at one point, Brooke and I had been talking about film, figuring out some things on our now called 29 Trouble show. She originally came on as a producer for that. And it was Mario's idea. Hey, why don't you guys start a company together? You both love film and you both want to create art and change the world. And we were like, oh, you know, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Yeah. And that was in April of 2021. Mm -hmm. So about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Which is crazy. I know. It feels like like 10 years, but also like two months at the same time. That's so true. And we've made, like, a lot of movies. Yeah, at least five. <laughs> at least five. At least five. <laughs> it really felt just like like a God moment, you know? The moment I met you was, like, literally two years ago, now-ish. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, this friendship just blossomed out of nowhere. And it was awesome. We bonded over film stuff. And then when Mario suggested that we, like, go into business together, two weeks later, we had our business license. Um, and I never once have ever questioned like is this the right thing is this like the plan for my life like I've always known like this is it yeah and interestingly enough that banquet and ball we were talking about big changes and plans and stuff and I was like maybe I should start a film business oh. but I had no idea how awesome it would be <laughs> people talk a lot about how hard your first year in business is and of course it was hard mostly because of logistical government red tape I will yep. say that but us working together has not been hard. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. I think we are a good team. I agree. Yeah. The official birthday of Grandin Film Productions LLC is the 29th of April. And so just about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. How far back in time do we want to go now? Oh, man. As far as I mean, I could go back to when I was like five years old fishing with it. my grandpa. Um, they had the giant camera like recorders with like the little VHS cassettes instead of like reeling in a fish i would get a bite on the pole and i would be like grandpa take the pole and then i'd get the camera and i'd start filming it <laughs> that's amazing you actually never told me that really no oh. i don't remember that's awesome though <laughs> yeah my grandpa talks about it all the time oh. Oh. i've always been into film never thought it would actually happen um i remember being in eighth grade and you know eighth grade you're like i don't know 13 14 yeah. or something and everyone's asking you like what do you want to be when you grow up and i would always tell them a film director even though I had no idea what that meant and no idea what it would take to get there. I was just like, I just, I love movies and I love making movies. Yeah. Um, and then in high school, that dream was squashed by, you know, reality. But uh, then I met Kate. So, <laughs> yeah. And you did, I know you don't like talking about it, but you did direct a short film at oh. some point. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk we about don't, that. We don't need to say the name of it. Some people mm -hmm. will be aware of what that is, but... <laughs> bug me about it when she's not here and then i can tell you yeah because <laughs> i am more positive about it than she is of course so. I, i'm warming up to it again but it was honestly a nightmare uh i would not do that again anytime soon it's been like four or five years yeah the way we do things now is way better yeah <laughs> so what about you man so i think that film is just for me the ultimate realization of my lifelong 
abilities of being a storyteller. Mm-hmm. One thing that my my family always did, we, we listened to a lot of audiobooks, we do a lot of reading. So stories, especially novels and classic novels, were very much a part of my upbringing. And I would actually create my own audiobooks sometimes. I wouldn't even write it down. I'd just tell this story and I'd put backing tracks of like dramatic pieces of music in key points and then it was the old tape recorder and I'd click record and I'd just speak over this music. I I would constantly be drawing. I I was super into the medieval times so I have tons of drawing books filled with pictures of knights and horses, especially knights and swords. (laughs) And so I would put those together and make books and then sometimes I would kind of create the audiobook to go with it Ooh. and then I'd record that and I remember there was one that I recorded that I was super happy about and then I listened to it but something was wrong and it was super fuzzy and hard to hear what I was saying it was like no I put so much work Ooh. into this and I put music and then I can't even hardly be heard I can't be heard so oh that's so sad <laughs> that was probably because the tape either the tape player or the tape that I was constantly recording over was getting old I think that was one of the last times I did that. When I learned to type, I became a prolific short story author. I have most of the stories that I wrote. And my mom still has some of the the, the ones that I drew and then stapled together and and colored and wrote little descriptions of what was going on in my picture books. Mm -hmm. And another interesting thing about my family is we really didn't watch a lot of movies Mm -hmm. or a lot of TV. Uh, my parents said that it would make us dissatisfied with books if we watched movies. Oh, wow. That is very not true. <laughs> well, I think that for a certain type of person, which I think I am, like now with technology and phones, I find myself having less patience to sit down and read a book. Mm. I think they were afraid that that would happen if we watched movies a lot. And so- I mean, I can see the fear for sure. I think about my own life and like I did grow up watching movies and I love, I still mm. love watching movies. That's my favorite hobby. Yeah. Um, but I was also an avid reader. I read Harry Potter, the entire series, in eight weeks. Um, and I've read Lord of the Rings twice. You know, I, I love reading. And mm. neither of the two have, like, quelled my love for the other. Mm. That's good. It's like they feed each other. It's like this need, like you were so- saying, for storytelling. Like, yeah. like, we are storytellers. And both of those are just different mediums of storytelling. Yeah. So, to go back to how that became filming. So... One thing that I also did was I would drag my siblings into doing all kinds of crazy things with me. We would put on backyard plays. We would create costumes and host these elaborate dances at my grandparents for Thanksgiving. (laughs) We'd dress up in costumes and come up with choreography, and I'd have them all practicing for weeks earlier. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. And so, like, we're going to do a backyard play. I wrote this script, recruited my friends to be in it, which is a big step up. Because when you're all, like, 10 years old and nobody can drive kind of not up to you if that's gonna happen or not (laughs) so I was like I'm gonna do a play and then I had this big idea I was like let's put it on at the Arboretum at by the Japanese garden and we'll have the we'll have the audience bring folding chairs and they can move their chairs around (laughs) so that depending on what scene it is if it's taking place in a different location we can still use all the locations oh wow so that was my idea and we went location scouting at the Arboretum and we did all these things then one day we were coming back from my grandparents house who lived in Leavenworth and we were talking about I still remember this so specifically. I was like, what if, I don't think anybody's ever done this before. And people probably have, but I didn't know I was 11 (laughs) years old. I was like, what if we made a CD of of all the different national anthems from around the world? Because this this idea was sparked because my cousins are Canadian and they were singing the Canadian national anthem for us. Mm. And I was like, that's super cool. That's super pretty. It would be super fun to have that as an album. And so then my mom was like, what if you bought a camera and you filmed your mo- your your play. What do you think about that? And I was like, hmm. And that is where Grand and Film Productions was born. <laughs> it took us about over a, a little more than just a summer. It was like a spring and summer into fall when we filmed. And there were a total of four families from my church who were involved with that. And the name Grannon comes from, so my maiden name is Hannon, and then it was originally supposed to be two families. I kind of double cast people, and then we ended up adding more people, so we didn't have to do that. But it was a combination of my maiden name, Hannon, and then the last name of the other family, who was like the original the original cast members of that. So that equals Grannon. And Grannon was originally spelled with two N's, because Hannon is spelled with two N's in the middle. So yeah. we've since changed that for branding purposes. So we filmed that in, I think... 2011 ish maybe 2010 but i think it was 2011 and that was the first movie that i ever filmed it was about 30 minutes long 
Is and that the one that I've seen? You have not seen oh, it. Damn. I know. It's somewhere on my parents' computer. That's right. It was called The Foolish Talkers. And it's a wild, it's a wild story. I'm kind of afraid for you to watch it, honestly. Oh. But <laughs> then I became obsessed with Star Wars and I wrote a series of short, short stories based on Star Wars called the Little Lord Vader series. And it's kind of like a rewrite of Darth Vader's childhood in a combination of what if Star Wars was mixed with normal life. And so that movie was about an hour and five minutes long, including credits. And that took us two years. So for the entirety of my high school career, I was making either that movie or the next one, which is of a medieval fantasy drama called Whatever It Takes. My favorite. Yes. <laughs> and there is a sequel, an idea for a sequel that bouncing around, but it's not at the top of our list to film yeah, yet. <laughs> unfortunately. So both of those were fantastic projects, huge learning experiences at the cast party. We didn't even call it a premiere. It was the, it was the cast party for Little Lord Vader and... My friend and I were passing out sheets for everybody to sign up to receive more information to be in our next movie, which I was already writing at the time. And so, but after the second one, there was this ma massive feeling of, what do I do with my life now? Mm -hmm. And that lasted longer than I liked to admit. And I didn't make anything for years. Wow. I didn't know it was years. Okay, I, I shot a couple of random music videos, one of which is released and one of which is not released that spring and summer, but I didn't even finish editing the one for a long time. Yeah. And it was that year, I think, that I made the Grand End Film Productions YouTube channel, and uh -huh. I put trailers on it mostly, yeah. and then I didn't touch it for years, and I came back, and the... The best trailer we had of whatever it takes had like 300 views. I was like, what? <laughs> when did this happen? <laughs> Over the three years that I wasn't paying attention to it. Yeah. So um, then came 2020. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Before everything went weird in 2020, though, I spontaneously made a music video or two. Shot a couple of them with my sister and with myself. And those were fun. Those are available on the Grand End channel for now. <laughs> thinking it might be time to archive them just because they're technically they don't really fit in with yeah what we do now but they're still there they're not yeah. terrible so during this time as a little backstory so i got married in 2019 there was one day when i really got inspired to write down the <coughs> the synopsis for little lord vader number two i had several ideas bouncing around in my head so i quickly wrote up the synopsis i was super excited about it and then I went to my, open up my old laptop and I still had the timeline in my editing software of whatever it takes. And I opened it up and I shrunk it all down so you could, it could fit in the same screen and it looked dead. And I thought, two plus years of my life and all it is is like a row of little teeny boxes. Yeah. And the sad thing about that project was some of the people who along with me had like poured their, their lives and their energy and their time into that. They were like, oh, that, that I don't I don't ever want to watch that again. That was so bad. That was so cringy. I, yeah, I'm just going to try to forget about it, essentially. Uh, which honestly broke my heart. Because yeah. I don't feel that way about it. Of course I look at it and see like, oh my gosh, the sound quality. What? <laughs> well, we didn't have a microphone, so of course the sound quality wasn't good. But I see so much of what it is and what it is that's good. So... I looked at that and was like, whatever I do next in film has to mean something more than just two years of our life that we poured into something that doesn't ultimately mean anything. Yeah. 2020. So that's when I f officially wrote out the script for the Lord Vader number two. And I was obsessed with it. Still am. It's an excellent script. Eh, I think so. And I was like, well, I can't make this now. This is going to take millions of dollars. And we have to like fly out to an actual desert somewhere if we're going to actually make this for what it's worth. But there is a little scene in there in which a couple of characters are watching a TV show called Tatooine Trouble, which is in the Little Lord Vader universe, this popular action show that the kids watch. Well, like young adult show, essentially. So I decided... Maybe I could make that. And so I reached out to my sisters who were involved in the Little Lord Vader and whatever takes projects. I was like, hey, do you want to help write this? Do you want to write this for me? Do you want to write this with me? Come up with something fun and silly that we can make potentially. And they were both like, yeah, I don't know. You can do that. We're not really interested in creating that type of thing. So I started writing this silly little script 
And then I was like, this actually, this story is actually kind of cool. I think it should be more than a silly little script. So then I wrote out this entire episode of Tatooine Trouble and we shot it that summer. Mm-hmm. And at one point during the pre-production phase, we were getting close to filming. Mario said, hey, I know somebody who's a makeup artist. And so he showed me one of your TikToks. And it was, it was the doll one. No, uh, not the doll one, the robot. The, the robot. Oh, yeah. I always say the I doll love the one, robot. But I know, the robot was so good. So I need to breathe more or something. Yeah, <laughs> you've been talking very fast. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> but anyway, so I could have had Brooke on for Tattooing Trouble. Spoiler alert, she did not. Yeah, I did not. Because one of the reasons was I'd already hired another makeup artist and I didn't want to be like, well, I'm just going to boot her out of her job. That would be sad. I don't know why I just didn't think that having two makeup artists would be more efficient. Because it would have been, especially with all the body painting we had to do for the Twilex. Yeah. But, and the bigger reason was I was like, I don't know who this person is. She looks amazing. I am super intimidated. I'm just going to be scared and not ask her. And here she is sitting next to me right now. <laughs> We filmed and we were in post-production, which dragged out for about nine months Mm -hmm. because of various technical problems. And that's when Brooke joined the scene. Yeah. Fun fact, my sister was actually in Tatooine Trouble. This is true. And I didn't know about it at all. (laughs) A guard in in the opening. And I think that's it. Yeah. I think she's just a guard. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the premiere for Tatooine Trouble. Uh, we watched it in this. What even is that building? It's kind of like woodworking shop. A woodworking shop, decently sized space. We had a projector. Uh, the sun was setting, so there was like light coming in. We had to in put curtains up. Yeah, and, that was, in front of the door. It was an interesting setup, but um, I, I remember watching it and thinking, like, this is really good, but it could be more. And uh, it was shortly after that I learned that Kate had this whole like 10. It may have even been before. It might have been before actually. But But it it was around that time mm -hmm. when I learned you had, I think it was 15 episodes planned at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's when I was like, Kate, this is amazing. You need to do this. And uh, that's when I joined on as producer and then started, you know, we started Granin. That was like, it premiered in February. March. March. Yeah. One month later, we had a business. Yep. <laughs> that That's mind-blowing to me. One month. Yeah. Insane. Quick shout out to the people who were actually able to help us start our business. Oh, heck, yeah. Yeah. So Skylar Young is one of them. If you don't know Skylar, you should. Skylar is the definition of awesome. He's enthusiastic. He's super kind, very generous, and very knowledgeable. He's one of the owners of a local website company, Site Savvy. And we picked his brain a lot about how do you start a business? What do you do? Like, how do thing? <laughs> <laughs> and he referred us to his mom, Cheryl Young, who was invaluable. We actually went over to her house. She walked us through like going on to the website, logging in, paying the fee for the business, doing all this stuff. And we walked out of her house with like, we have a business. Yeah. <laughs> we just paid $200 to the government so they could say we have a business. Yeah. And, and we've been paying money to the government ever since. Yes. We have made more money than we have paid them. That is true. I am thankful for that. Yes, me too. (laughs) Chloe Young, Skylar's sister, she talked a lot about grants and... Mm -hmm. Just lots of funding, money, money, ways we can, you know, not get stuck in a rut (laughs) financially. Chloe's awesome. She actually was the makeup artist for Tatooine Travel. So she used to thank for the body painting Mm -hmm. and the the beauty makeup and such for that ultimately ended up in the show. Leah Lakey. Leah Lakey. Like, she has been the biggest help. She's also help. part of Site Savvy, the mm-hmm. website company. Yeah. Um, very knowledgeable about, like, how to grow your business. Yeah. Um, talking about all these complicated things, like, what is it, SEO and optimizing your search engine compatibility and all these things that, like, totally go over my head. But I'm like, uh-huh, <laughs> tell me more, please. <laughs> yep. Lots of notes. You have yes. lots of notes lots from of conversations notes. with yes. Leah. <laughs> Um, I know we also talked briefly to Zach Stamba a little bit, who mm-hmm. gave us what information he could without us ha- having to pay him because he is a lawyer. Yes. So <laughs> just some information about tax stuff mostly, mm-hmm. I think, which tax stuff is very confusing. Oh, it is easier to do your taxes as an employee. I will say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but more beneficial to do it as a business owner. Yep. 
Maybe Jared we should Bauer. Do that. <laughs> We're literally in his studio yeah. right now. This is his his cool Lord of the Rings map. I love it so much. It's the Shire. Yeah. What does film mean to us? Why film versus other mediums? What do we hope to accomplish? We are going to take over the world. Yeah. Well, we're going to start with Yakima. Yeah. Maybe buy an island after that. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So what... So, okay, guess so we're on that second question first. What do we want to do? I want to be able to have our mu- movies streamed or put in a theater. Distributed. There we go. That's the yeah. word. Distributed around the world. Mm-hmm. And for them to be some of those big blockbusters that you hear about that everybody talks about actually i would prefer not to be famous personally i want to have a life i don't want to have paparazzi following me and my kids around as we try to go to the grocery store that does not sound like fun but i believe and i know that art especially movies influence culture in so huge of a way Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of negative influence out there and i want to counteract that by creating something that's a a positive influence there's something that speaks truth you you mentioned like movies are a huge part of our culture nowadays a, a, as far back as humans have existed you know storytelling's always been a thing it's always been what yeah. influences culture and teaches children and you we want to be part of that in a in a positive way not not glorifying like violence and no. you know all these kinds of terrible things that just they poison the mind and yeah. desensitize people to true horrors. Um, like the the new Jeffrey Dahmer show, whatever that came out on mm-hmm. Netflix. Like, I understand the fascination with, like, serial killers and stuff. It, I am also fascinated by it. I'm actually not. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's right to just continuously, like, make these movies that are really doing nothing else than glorifying this person, drawing attention yeah. to it effectively teaching people how to be a serial killer yeah i don't know about that particular the the Dahmer on netflix but i've seen other serial killer like documentaries and stuff and it's like you you're going into so much detail that if someone wanted to replicate this they very easily could Mm -hmm. you you're influencing them it in a way that's like oh if i do these things I'll have a movie made about me. I'll get attention. I'll be famous. Criminals, you know, they, they do that kind of thing for the attention. You yeah. you see a lot of psychotic people will do terrible things for attention. Yep. And so continuously making movies that just glorify that, it's, it's poisoning our culture. Yeah. But also so how to portray evil in a truthful and honest way without glorifying it. Mm-hmm. It's a very hard line to walk. <sighs> Yeah. Very intimidating process, mm-hmm. but we don't want to whitewash everything and mm-hmm. be like, oh, look at everything. Everything is always happy and everything always has a happy ending because we're all in the world. We know that's not true. There's heartbreak and there's death and there's sickness and and sorrow and pain and there's all of that, but it all has a greater purpose ultimately and it's all building us to who we're supposed to be. With the rebranding of Granin, it came to stand for grit, elegance, and conviction. And that's kind of what I go back to when I think about what I want my projects to mean. Grit is the endurance, the the perseverance, the hard work that it takes to make good art, make something of good quality. And elegance is its beauty, its symmetry, its it's not just visuals, but it's themes and things that are good and beautiful and 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 lovely. And I like that too. And then there's conviction, which is beliefs and truth and what we stand for, which we also want to portray. So why why film? Why can't we do that with like, I don't know, with a podcast or with uh, a novel? Like why why movies? Well, I think we can do it with that. Of, of course. course, I yeah. mean, but why did we why did we choose why did we specifically choose movies? Like I I'm also a writer. I've have I have multiple novels in the works. I've written plays and movies, and for okay. me, like movies are just so special that you don't ever with any other form of entertainment. You don't get to just sit back on your couch with a blanket and a cup of tea or whatever and just watch and listen and be immersed through the visual senses um, without a crowd, you know, because mm-hmm. you can do that in a theater. But um, when it's in your home and it's you feel... individual. Yeah. There's something different about it. And when you're watching a really good movie, there's just something so personal about it, something that, like... 
you can't get that with like anything else. And that for me is like one of the ultimate like why movies. Mm -hmm. It's that feeling. I like movies because they encompass essentially every other art form in themselves. Oh, yeah. You got writing, you got acting, makeup, costume design, you got the technical aspect of it with mics and cameras and all of that. So basically whatever skills you have, and even if you look at the business side, like producing, like accounting, oh, money, man. budgeting, literally every skill there yeah. is in the world, carpentry, building sets, building props, everything is involved in making a movie. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what your skill is, whatever your area of expertise is, you can help out in a movie, which is so cool. And you can have millions of people look at your work. Yeah. And I really like that aspect about it too. Yeah. And there's just nothing like being on set and oh. just making something. It's the best feeling in the world. As grueling as it is. It's like you're done with your filming and you're like, oh, yeah. it's over. The day I was looking forward to for so long and it's gone. Yeah. Now I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and do it all again in a week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> feel like that wrap about wraps it up? I feel like it does. I mean, I could go on talking about this forever and ever, but. Yeah. Well, I've, which is one of the reasons why we started this podcast. It's true. Because we have these conversations a lot. Yeah. Usually when we're in the car. Yeah. There will be more episodes forthcoming. Yeah. We have to still work out some kind of schedule and yeah. stuff. We've got a, a few topics in mind. Yes. Quite uh, a few. A few guests in mind. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for some mm -hmm. invites. You people watching, I know who you are. That uh, That's a wrap for now. And we hope you have a blessed day. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching yes. or listening.